Yo, it's Bo. Welcome back to Kerbal Complete and Kerbal Space Program. Today we're sending a mission out to the furthest ice giant in the Outer Planets mod called Naiden, which is the Neptune analog. This is my spacecraft for today. This is kind of my interplanetary vehicle. It's got a lander, uh, some science areas, some habitation modules, a centrifuge ring, and this engine here, which is a nuclear engine from the Kerbal Atomics mod. This is my launch vehicle. It's kind of like four Saturn V boosters slapped together with a giant fairing. It's kind of inspired by something I saw in a historical NASA concept where they were going to slap four Saturn V boosters together to make a super heavy launch vehicle. But yeah, here we are making our gravity turn and burning our way through the lower parts of the atmosphere. I'll check back in with you guys when it's time to make our final kick burn to circularize into a stable orbit around Kerman. All right, now that we're coasting up to our apoapsis, it's time for that kick burn to circularize around Kerbin. And when that's done, it'll be time to pop open this fairing and get this inner planetary vehicle started. So just detach from the booster and it's time to inflate the inflatable module. So we've got a centrifuge ring and a habitation module. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really proud of this design. I think it's really cool. And now let's work on getting our trajectory all the way out to Naden, which, like I said before, is the Neptune analog of the Outer Planets mod. I've just set it as my target. It's pretty far out there. It takes several decades to um, fly out there with like a Hoffman transfer, and uh, but not too much delta V comparatively. It's like 25. 100 meters per second of delta V. It takes about 3,000 meters per second of delta V to get on an escape trajectory out of the solar system. So it's just about as far out is really meaningful for your delta V planning, but it's a really challenging and cool destination. Now that we've got our apoapsis to intersect the orbit of Naden, we can just work on flying out of the Kerbin system and we'll say goodbye to our lovely home world for probably the next couple decades, to be honest. As we coast on out of the orbit of Kerbin, I think it'll be a good time to give you guys a ship tour. So we're using the mod Free IVA, which allows us to traverse the interior of the parts, which is really awesome. Um, I just left the command module and I'm heading into kind of like an observation module right here on one of the four connector ports of the station core. Yeah, so we got this nice little window here to check out what's going on outside and on the opposite side wait these are unmarked supports so we kind of difficult to get around this is the inflatable habitation module that I was talking about earlier it's pretty cool it's got plenty of space for Kerbals to sleep and uh, work but it's not all that we have further down the ship we have a centrifuge which spins up to a certain speed that allows a kind of centrifugal force to pull you towards the outside of the ring, kind of giving the effect of gravity. So this is what we've got on the inside, some computer stations, some more um, bunk bed type deals. And I guess those weren't bunk beds, those were more like just crew quarters. And we're back towards the core. And once you're up this ladder, you're back in zero G. It's pretty cool. The centrifuge and most of these kind of space station-like parts were added with the mod Stock Alike Station Parts Expansion Redux, which is awesome. It's like one of my favorite mods. This right here is a science module. It's kind of near the nose of the spacecraft. So that completes our tour today. This is the kind of command center. But yeah, that's my spacecraft for today. Hope you guys think it's cool. 
All right, now we have to work on getting that official flyby intercept with Naden. So what I've done is I've set a maneuver node at one of the ascending or descending nodes, and I'm adjusting the inclination and also doing a small radial component to this burn so that we can adjust it to get the right flyby. And right now, I'm just adjusting my trajectory through the system to line up with this white orbit, which is a moon called Thatmo, which is an icy kind of snowy world that is an analog to the real world moon of Neptune called Triton. Something interesting about it is that it orbits in a retrograde direction relative to the other celestial bodies in the solar system, which suggests that it is a captured object, probably a kind of one of these Kuiper Belt dwarf planets long ago that got captured into an orbit around Naden. And we've warped ahead. We're now entering the sphere of influence of the planet. We're kind of passing around the night side. You can see some of its really faint rings backlit there by the sun. We have to do a capture burn so that we don't just keep flying on past it to capture into a stable orbit around the planet. And our landing target for today is that mode, that icy mode that I was talking about. So I've just set it as my target. We're gonna need to do an inclination matching burn, which I'm setting up here. And now I just need to adjust my next orbit so that I can get an encounter. It's fairly easy to get an encounter with it as it's a fairly large-ish moon. All right, looks like we've got that encounter and I'm just setting up a maneuver to circularize and we're warping ahead till we've entered the sphere of influence of Thatmo. It has periodic snow clouds, snowstorms that you can see from orbit, which is really cool. We're going to be checking those out on the surface once we land. There we've captured, just working on getting that a little bit more circular. The atmosphere starts at about 35 kilometers, so I'm just kind of trying to get an altitude just above that. Looking back at the inner solar system, it's super far away, as you can see in the sky. And this is what it looks like in orbit around Thatmo. It's got a faint purplish, bluish atmosphere scattered with periodic snow clouds that blow over the moon. All right, now it's time to get started on our landing. So this lander only holds one Kerbal, so we've transferred our Kerbal into the spacecraft and undocked from the mothership, and we're gonna have to burn retrograde to put ourselves on a trajectory that will impact the surface. We're aiming to land in this little valley here in between these hills. Thatmo has a really thin atmosphere, so as we prepare to land, we'll get ready to deploy some of our parachutes to make use of the atmosphere to slow down. And our main chutes have also deployed. There's some Parallax 2 scatter on the ground. Looks like it failed to load, but we landed safely. I'm gonna go ahead and reload it, and the Parallax scatter is back, so that's great. And we're getting out to plant a flag on our surface and make the first footsteps on Thatmo. We're gonna wait till one of these snowstorms passes overhead and we'll check out what that's like.
All right, we checked out the surface. Now it's time to do some science real quick and get back in the lander to rendezvous with the mothership. And the way to do that is to set the mothership as your target in the map screen and warp ahead till it's kind of past overhead and that will uh, make the target node pop up on your nav ball and you can kind of just point towards it and use it as a guide to inform your heading on your ascent. Just setting up a circularization burn at our apoapsis that we're coasting up to currently. We just detached the radial tanks and we've put our orbit into a stable circular shape around Thatmo. Now we can just work on getting a rendezvous with the mothership so I'm doing a inclination matching burn to match orbits with the mothership. And on our next few orbits, we'll make sure that our orbit intersects the orbit of our mothership. And we will work on a few maneuvers to get those flyby nodes right on top of each other. And then we will set our nav ball relative to target and then burn off all of our relative speed once we're right at that flyby node. I'm just performing that final maneuver to get those nodes right on top of each other. We're getting like a uh, half kilometer separation, which is really good. And once we're passing at our closest approach, we'll burn off all of our relative speed, like I was saying, and burn towards the target and then kill off all of your speed again. Now we're going to work on docking these guys together. All right, looks like we've docked the lander back to the mothership, and now we need to start planning our return to Kerbin after 37 years in space already. So I'm just working on a escape trajectory burn out of Thatmo, and then another escape burn out of Naden's sphere of influence. So to get a return trajectory back to Kerbin, what we're going to want to do is exit Naden's sphere of influence in the retrograde direction that the planet is moving. That will lower our periapsis on the other side of the sun, as you can see, and we can tweak that so that our periapsis lines up with the orbit of Kerbin, which is that light blue orbit. I just realized now that my lander is kind of dead weight and it was causing some problems with the time warp, so I'm just moving my Kerbal that was in the lander into one of the re-entry pods and warping ahead to that escape trajectory burn that I just set up. And there we go, coasting out of the Naden system, which is the Neptune analog of the Outer Planets mod. Really, really recommend this mod, guys. It adds some essential replacements for the gaps, or not replacements, it fills the gaps that the original Kerbal system had, namely no ice giants, which is really cool. All right, we've set up a small maneuver to adjust our inclination and use some of the radial in and out nodes to force an encounter. It's really easy this far out as um, Kerbin will be making several passes around the sun by the time we get there. And we're warping ahead till our encounter. And before we, we fly through the system, I want to adjust our flyby so that we can be on a good trajectory to circularize around the planet. That's right, we have enough fuel to circularize around Kerbin which is good because the re-entry pods that I chose for my spacecraft are the Russian modeled versions, which have a slightly less beefy heat tolerance. And it'll be better this way that we're not coming in from super interplanetary speeds with this circularization maneuver. So here we are back at Kerbin 70 years later.
here we are captured around Kerbin. I'll set up another maneuver on the next flyby to complete the circularization. And we have two re-entry pods, each with the capacity of two Kerbals, but there's four Kerbals on our interplanetary ship's crew, so we're gonna have to do two separate re-entries. So the first one, just detached, and we're gonna warp ahead till that, well, before we warp ahead, we're gonna put the mothership on a stable orbit again, and then switch back to the re-entry pod and re-enter the atmosphere. All right, our chutes have just opened up, so we're gonna be floating down to the surface, safe and sound, for our first splashdown of our crew. And we'll switch back in orbit to the mothership, where we will detach, we'll lower our periapsis into the atmosphere again, and detach our last remaining re-entry module. All right, we've burned off most of our speed and we're just about ready to open those parachutes. And our parachutes have fully caught and now we're just floating down to the surface for our last splashdown for this mission. Anyways, guys, that's about it for today's video. Please drop a comment, subscribe, and like the video if you want to see more Kerbal Space Program content like this in future episodes of the Kerbal Complete series. And I'll see you guys in the next one.